rock stars of Swift. It's Professor Gallagher, and at this point in our Intro to Swift UI playlist, you've worked with images, with text views, created buttons, you've worked with modifiers, you've learned about vStacks and hStacks, variables and state and frames. Now it's time to apply all of this and to build a new project from scratch in the Elvis Costello Challenge. If you're new here, welcome. You might want to check out the course playlist to see how we got here. Now for those of you that don't know, Declan McManus, the British rocker known musically as Elvis Costello and also holder of the rank order of the British Empire bestowed on him by the late Queen Elizabeth, is the musical genius behind multiple hit songs including Allison, Pump It Up, Watching the Detectives, and of course, Peace, Love and Understanding. This last song is the inspiration for your first full app challenge. I'd play you a clip now, but YouTube has been known to banish content that uses copyright songs, so I'll leave it for you to look up on your own. Now, your challenge is to create a new Xcode project from scratch. Name this Elvis. Build the app as demonstrated at the right. Use the color purple for the text views and the buttons. All text views use the large title font in black weight. The message text view should initially be blank. You can refer to this as message in your code so that we can compare our results. The image view should initially be blank. You can refer to this as image name in your code, again, so we can compare. And the image should display inside a 300 by 300 square. Now use the library tool to discover appropriate symbols. Hint, look for a peace sign, heart, and light bulb. So right about now, Funky Swifter, why don't you pause, give this a try, and when you're ready, resume, and let's compare answers. So hopefully you remember the project setup steps. If not, here they are quickly. We'll open up Xcode. We'll create a new project. I'll green traffic light for full screen. This is an app for iOS. Those are the defaults. Click next. The product name should be Elvis. Defaults here should all be as is as well. Click next. I'll save mine to the desktop. Make sure create Git repository is clicked. Click create. And our project is created. Close the navigators pane, shrink the preview pane, and we're ready to code. Now I'm going to highlight and delete the image with its modifiers, and with just the text view left, I'm going to change its string to read, What's so funny about? Now the challenge asked for the text views to be large title, black weight, and the color purple, so underneath the text view we'll add the dot font modifier, passing in dot large title as the font, we'll add the dot font weight modifier, passing in dot black, and we'll add the dot foreground style modifier, passing in dot purple as the color. Looks good. Now we want this text view to be flush with the top, so I'm going to enter a spacer with open and close parens, nothing between those parens. With this entered just below the text view, it pushes the text view up to the top. Nice. And below the spacer, we'll add an image view. And when we type in image, code completion gives us lots of options. We're working with system images or symbols, so we want to select the option with the system name parameter. Select that. Press enter. And ho, oh, I get this crash message. This happens sometimes with beta software and even without. All I need to do here is click OK. I'll do that in both dialog boxes, and if your Xcode continues to be weird, you can just quit Xcode and restart it, and if things continue to be super weird, you can restart your Mac. I'm just going to backspace and then re-enter image and select system name. Now things work. And now let's figure out what symbols we're going to use. I'll add double quotes with my cursor in between. I'll shift command L to open the library and click the symbols library icon at the far right of the tab bar. And I didn't give you the name since I wanted to encourage you to search, but I did give you some pretty strong hints. So if we search for peace, we see peace sign, all one word. All lowercase, that's one of our symbols. Search for heart, and we see heart as our love symbol. And search for light bulb, all one word, all lowercase, that's going to be our understanding symbol. So for now, I'm going to enter peace in here, double click on peace sign, and that's entered into my string. But we'll change this in a bit. When we're done with the app, we want to start out with a blank image and a blank text view underneath this. But I want something in here while I finish my screen design. Now our peace sign is teeny tiny, but we can add the dot resizable modifier, nothing between the parens. This stretches out the image all gnarly like, and it takes up the full screen. But to preserve the image's aspect ratio, we enter the dot scale to fit modifier, nothing between parens, and this is much better. Now to center that image, I'm going to enter another spacer below it, and in between the image and the spacer, I want to enter a text view that will change when I press the buttons. So I'll start typing text view. Now in fact, instead of typing in here, I want to use the same modifiers as the text view above. Now since that text view is going to have modifiers that are identical to the top text view, I'm just going to highlight that top text view and its modifiers, Command C to copy, and then I'll Command V to paste this just below the image but above the bottommost spacer. And now why don't we set up our variables so that we can change the image view and the second text view when we click buttons. 
Now remember, we create variables that we want to use throughout the file inside our struct and above the body variable. So we'll make some space in there, and the variable to hold the changing message will be called message. So we'll enter a line here that reads at state private var message. We declare that variable as a state variable. Make sure that you've got at and capital S with no space, and follow that with equal Overly eager AI thinks I want hello world in here. I do not. And for now, we'll set it equal to the string piece with a capital P, although we'll eventually change this to an empty string. And again, overly eager AI is giving me a JFK quote, even though he was born just a few miles from where I am now. I don't want Kennedy in here. This app has nothing to do with him. So we've just declared the message variable. That means we've created the variable message, a box to hold data and initialized it, meaning we put some initial data in there, which is the string piece. And below this, we'll create a variable to hold the system name string that we're gonna use in our image view. We'll call this image name, lower camel case. So we'll say at state private var image name, again, lower camel case, so that's all one word, only the N is capitalized. And we'll initialize this variable by setting it equal to the string, so in between double quotes, Peace sign, all lowercase, all one word. AI guessed right this time, I'll tab to accept it. Now, let's use these variables. In the image view, we'll replace the literal string peace sign with the variable name, image name, no quotes in there, this is a variable, not a string. And in the text view, below this, we'll replace the literal string with the variable message. So our image now has the system name, which is peace sign, that's the same as the literal string that we had before and the text message changes because it's now using the string inside of our message variable, which is peace with a capital P. Now below the last spacer, let's create an H stack for our button so we can put them side by side horizontally. And this is with a capital H, capital S, and open and close curlies. And in between the curlies, remember we call that a closure in Swift. We'll enter button, and Xcode gives us lots of options for creating buttons, but we'll usually use this one here with the title key and the action. So highlight that option and press return. Now the title key is just a string that we're going to use for the button's title, so this should be the word piece between double quotes, it's a string with a capital P. And remember this part, if we tab over to our action, remember we discussed in a previous lesson how to change this format to the trailing closure format? You just press return here, and Xcode closes the button line with an open paren, it adds curlies for our action closure and it gives us a line in between where we can add our action code. Now the action code is what happens when we click on this button. And what we wanna do is we wanna change the message to the string piece and the image name to the string piece sign. Now we are eventually gonna initialize those two variables to empty strings when the app starts. We just put some values in there now so that we could see something in these views when we were creating our apps interface. So between the curlies we'll say message, equals the string piece. So between double quotes, that's capital P, piece. This is what's gonna show up in the message. And below this, look at this, predictive code completion properly guesses that I wanna set my image name variable here, and it properly guesses image name should equal piece sign, all one word, all lowercase, that's the proper system name. That's correct, so to accept this, I'll press tab, and it's entered automatically. So again, to know how this is gonna work, when that piece button is pressed, the state variable for the message is going to be updated to contain the string piece, and the state variable for image name is going to be updated to contain the string P sign. Now Swift UI will recognize that some of the data in the app has changed. It's going to change the image view and the text view. Since those are state variables, it's going to throw away the old user interface. It's going to recreate a new one super fast using this updated data. But since these two variables are state variables, they can be mutated, they can be changed, and they're parked off to the side so that they don't get thrown away with the rest of the user interface. Instead, they keep their value, they keep their state. Cool. Now we'll eventually initialize those two variables to empty strings. We just put values in there now so that we could see something in the views when we're creating our apps user interface. Now we're gonna eventually add two more buttons inside the H stack and all those buttons will have the same modifiers. They're gonna be purple and they're gonna use the border prominent style. So I'm gonna put the button modifier below the H stack's closing curly. And remember, if you can't find the closing curly, you can option click on one curly and the other curly will show up or you can click on the code folding ribbon and everything between the two curlies is folded, so now you can find out where to start. So if I put the modifiers below the closing curly in the H stack, they should modify anything that I put inside the H stack so I don't have to repeat it below each button. So we'll start out by adding dot tint. Remember we use the tint modifier and not the foreground style modifier when we're changing color on an interactive view like a button, and we'll set the color to dot purple. 
and we'll add another modifier, dot button style, changing this to dot bordered prominent. And you didn't need to code fold your H stack, but it's an easy way to hide code that gets in the way and to easily find the closing curly. I'm just gonna click on the chevron to unfold my code and expose everything that was inside the curlies of the H stack. And this looks great. Now we wanna add two more buttons inside of the curlies for the H stack, and I could type the code for this, but to save time, I'm gonna copy the button that I created along with its action trail enclosure. I'll command C to copy this, and I'll paste two copies below this, command V twice, and I'll change the middle button's title string to read love, capital L. And in its action, I'll set the message equal to the string love, capital L, and the image name equal to the string heart. Heart should be spelled all lowercase. Remember, that's gonna match to the system name of the symbol we wanna use. And the last button should have the title string understanding with a message under it also understanding, and the image name should be set to light bulb, all one word, all lowercase. And these buttons work, niceness but there are two things that we need to change. The images are not constrained by a 300 by 300 frame as the problem requested, so we'll add a frame modifier to the image and that will prevent our text view underneath the image from bouncing around. And also the problem said that the app should start with nothing in the central image and text view, so we'll just change the initialization of our state variables so that they both have empty strings. And remember, when an image view is passed a system name that doesn't match with an existing symbol, it just shows an empty image with nothing inside it. So with those two variables initialized to empty strings, now let's add a frame modifier below the image view. We want to add one with width and height. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type dot F-R-A-M to highlight the frame modifier. Without typing any space, I'm also gonna type W-I to highlight the width parameter and H-E to highlight the height parameter. Xcode highlights those two parameters. When I press return, it's gonna enter those two values, but not alignment. That's not highlighted. So press return, nice. I'll enter 300 for my width, tab over, enter 300 for the height. And as we click our individual buttons, our app works exactly as requested in the challenge problem. Fantastic work, Swifter. I'm rocking to your mellifluous Swift skills. And remember, if you want to try out the liquid glass button effect, you can just comment out the tint purple and set your button style to dot glass. Again, glass prominent doesn't seem to do anything, but if you're one of my students and you're submitting your work, make sure that you change this back to border prominent as was requested. Now, if you struggled with this, hopefully things are clear now that we've gone through the solution. And what I always advise my students to do is that if anything tripped you up, then you should return to this challenge in a day or so and continue to try to complete it again on your own until you can finish this without any errors and without having to look at your notes. Remember, if you need to, it's totally fine to review past lessons. Also, don't forget to create a new GitHub repo and add this to your portfolio. But Swiftmeister, I hope you're feeling skilled. I hope you're enjoying our time together. Drop a like and post a comment below. And remember, if you social post with the Built with Prof G hashtag, you might be selected for the free My Mac Builds Apps laptop sticker. There's more goodness to come, so continue the hacking.